beautiful May morning to you here from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry, and what a glorious day. Today's antique flowers that we're sowing from seed directly into the garden this time are Larkspur and Poppy. To talking about these two wonderful antique flowers, let's just look at these beautiful old flowers. We have these growing in the garden at the moment. We've got the beautiful white irises, and I don't know why the white ones always bloom first in my garden, but they do. I suppose they do in yours too. And then we have the garden, purple garden sage and some large alliums. And back here, the last of the lilac for that wonderful scent. I've always loved the very faint scent of the iris as well. It's so pretty inside. So when we talk about poppies, there are many, many different kinds. We have your typical Shirley poppies, You've got opium poppies, you've got oriental poppies, you've got California poppies. Right here we're looking at some Shirley poppies, also called American Legion poppies or Flanders poppies. But you may think of these as Wizard of Oz poppies because when these bloom, they'll be red. And you can recall perhaps that big field of poppies in the Wizard of Oz where everyone fell asleep due to the somewhat narcotic effect of the poppies. And that would bring us to the opium poppy. Right from the heavenly side of these poppies growing in your garden are the seed pods. Some of those seed pods can be uh, as big as a golf ball, holding millions of tiny, tiny seeds to produce next year's crop. The Romans probably introduced the plant to England where it was used medicinally. In fact, it's one of the oldest cultivated plants. The flowers and its narcotic byproduct have played a large part in many cultures throughout the world. And of course, we know that somewhat nefarious in regard to the opium trade, but that is not what we're talking about today. We are talking about the beauty of the flower and how marvelous it will be in your garden. It is. It's actually the seeds from the opium poppy, otherwise known as the Papaver somniferum, that are used for poppy seed rolls and breads and cakes all over the world. And it is not illegal to sell the seeds because they haven't got a trace of the drug in them. In fact, you would have to grow acres and acres and acres of poppies in order to get any sort of illicit drug from them. So we modern gardeners, we grow them for their beauty. And we grow them because they're, they're delicate, papery, colorful, and gorgeous. But what we're concentrating on today are California poppies 
And California poppies are very short. They, uh, they only grow about oh, no more than two foot tall. They're magnificent planted in mass, and I've, I've seen them in the orange, mostly the orange, but I've also seen them in a kind of a golden yellow sunshine color. And then we've got our American Legion poppies, Flanders poppies, Shirley poppies, which are generally red, but also bloom in pinks, pale pinks, and an almost white color, very delicate and airy looking. And that's what we'll be planting today. Beautiful, beautiful poppies. Very fleeting. These are Shirley poppies planted in a little corner with larkspur and bachelor buttons and daisies. It's recommended that you sow your poppy seed in late fall or early, early spring. And this is another seed that's extremely tiny. So we have American Legion poppies, we have California poppies, we have blue Euro poppies, and because the seed is so tiny, and normally I just kind of broadcast it by hand, one of you viewers suggested I use a salt shaker, which is a great idea. It has, some of the holes are a little bit bigger, so might be helpful but we'll give that a try this time and see if we get a little better more even spread than having all those little seedlings come up in the same spot so so a couple million seeds here in a well worked area in the garden we're just going to sprinkle those seeds right on top of the soil Let's see how that looks. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty good. That gives a little, quite a good dispersion, I think. So we'll, we'll find out. So last year I had some really beautiful, large, special poppies that were pretty expensive, and I wanted to make sure that I got the seed from them. So I collected the pods. The pods were great. Most of them were really pretty big. This was one of the smaller pods. But I collected the pods, and I actually got the seeds out, too. I used the pods in some flower arrangements, dried flower arrangements over the winter. But just look at all those seeds. So these need to go out into the garden. Well, they're still good. And then I have something else I have got to use, because it's going to get old if I don't. And that, believe it or not, is this huge bag, which is a mix of spring flowers. It's got flax, forget-me-nots, black sunflower seeds, and hollyhocks. Don't see a whole lot of hollyhocks in there. And also those blue papaversum somniferin poppies. This was really beautiful last year. I sprinkled it last spring. I got quite a, quite a wildflower garden. And I got this mixture from a gal who has a YouTube channel, and her name is starfishhoney.com. Or on YouTube, her name is Poppy Mama. One thing I love about the poppy are the really unique pod heads. In fact, the flower in it of itself I don't think is all that impressive, but I just love the way these pods just droop over like this and then afterwards after they've bloomed you get those great seed pods that you can use in dried flower arrangements but something else that I love about the poppies are these sort of rubbery looking ruffled grayish green leaves and these can get quite tall now these were self-seeded from last year's mother plant and she did a great job of self-seeding and don't they look great with that grayish green foliage against 
the fern-like green of the larkspur. And they bloom around the same time, so they're great to put in the garden together. So choose the location that you want for your poppies. And in this case, I've got a nice sunny spot in the potager where there's this strip of elephant garlic right here going down the center. I've got daffodils that have already bloomed. When they turn yellow, I will be cutting them all the way down to the ground. And then I've got a few sporadic um, Flanders poppies coming up here and there from dropped seed last year. But I'd like to fill this entire strip along the edge with some hens and chicks poppies. And the soil is nice and moist. I've made it, I've worked it pretty well so it's nice and fine. Well, there are a few chunks in there, but I think it'll be just fine. And then I'm planting alongside a pepper, um, uh, sweet sweet pepper patch here in the potager because I love to put flowers with vegetables and those elephant garlic down the center I don't plant them for the garlic I plant them for the gigantic and beautiful seed heads so using the advised method of the salt shaker I'm going to shake these little seeds out and hopefully they won't be too thick. The problem with these is they're so hard to see. Now one thing about poppies that I, I learned last year is that you really do need to thin them out if they're growing too closely together because they'll just be little midgets if you don't. If you give them room to grow though they'll get nice and tall anywhere from two feet to four foot tall but they really do need to be thinned. So if you only have a small packet of poppy seed, just be very careful as to where you put your seed. And then because poppies are so short-lived as far as the bloom goes, you might want to intersperse this with something else that will come up after your poppies have bloomed. And I'm going to go ahead and you could do zinnias would be really great right here. That's usually what grows in this spot as well. But I think I'm going to do some really tall snapdragons to grow alongside the poppies. And we'll see what happens. So keep this ground nice and moist for your poppies. And in 7 to 14 days, hopefully you'll start having some little seedlings coming up. Here's a very young plant coming up right here. You can see. And I absolutely wish you luck with your poppies because they really are a marvelous antique flower. Only it's confusing. I think we're just going to sit here amongst the larkspur, a plant that I don't think really gets the attention that it deserves. It comes in a rainbow of colors from white to pale blue, pale pink, lavender, and down to purple. And these aren't blooming yet, but these are all from seed that was dropped from last year's slope of Larkspur. And I'm going to intersperse video of last year's plants so that you can see what they look like. That video clip was last year's garden and it was planted from the previous year. There were two small packets that I put in. Because the larkspur is cold tolerant, you can actually start planting it in autumn and then you can sow it every three to four weeks until the last frost date and that will give you a continuous bloom all throughout the summer. 
Now the hill that you see here, this slope full of larkspur, is here because of two little packets of larkspur seed that I planted the previous year. The plants grew about four foot tall and then they dropped seed and that's why we have another slope full of larkspur because this is an annual it does not return it only returns by dropping seed. Larkspur was once classified as an annual delphinium. The delphinium is a perennial and actually a lot more stately and gorgeous as you can see by this photograph of these gorgeous delphiniums with what uh, just marvelous colors. But I've always thought of the larkspur as the poor cousin twice removed from the delphinium. And if you live in a climate like we do, which is very hot and humid, we can't really grow delphiniums very well. At least I can't. But larkspurs, they really like it here. Here we have the stately cousin, the delphinium, which seems a lot more robust. The leaves look different and they come in a lot more vibrant colors. But I am very fond of this beautiful plant here. Now, one thing the larkspur has that the delphinium does not have is it makes a great dried flower. It will last in a vase for about a week and if you pick it before it is one-third bloomed and put it in a vase, it will last for about a week, as I said, and it is also great as a dried flower. They've been grown since the time of the pharaohs, and it was thought that the seeds could dispel body vermin and ward off scorpions. It's been established that larkspur were grown in England in 1570, by the very latest, and they were used to treat cuts and sores. Also, it's been known as a wildflower that grows amid the cornfield, so it would be considered a weed to farmers. But we certainly don't look at it that way. Now, since the larkspur is an annual, which means it only grows for one season, but it is a prolific self-seeder. So along this fence line, here you see a very small baby. Every single larkspur growing here, self-seeded and went all the way down the line up along the fence. So um, you don't have to seed them every year. That's the lovely thing about annuals. Some, some annuals do such a great job of just taking care of business and keeping their family line going. Your larkspur seed is also pretty small, but it's oh, it's actually three times bigger than that um, poppy seed. So this is pretty easy to disperse. And it's so easy to do. Just clear your piece of ground, get the soil so it's nice and fine, and then just sprinkle this on top, and then keep on watering it until it germinates, and then make sure that it stays a little bit moist. You don't want them absolutely frying in the sun, but you don't want to drown them either. So these are just so wonderful and easy to grow. And I think I've shown you that uh, they will reseed very, very beautifully for you. Very prolific larkspur. One of the most wonderful, wonderful antique flowers I can think of. Finally, I'm getting some strawberries in my garden.
Today we are having a refreshing afternoon after gardening treat and we're not having tea today we're having raspberry lemonade and some beautiful things from the garden. All of today's recipes came from the Colonial Williamsburg cookbook and when I saw the image, the photograph of this raspberry mousse placed in a tulip I just couldn't resist trying it before all my tulips were gone. And the only tulips that were left in the garden were these tangerine colored tulips. So I may have preferred a pink one, but this is what we had. These are simply a really rich buttery sugar cookie mixture in which was added one and a half teaspoons of dried lavender flowers you can purchase those lavender flowers for cooking or you can grow them out of your own garden and dry them. And today's plate, dishware, is by one of my favorite garden artists. And I'm not, I don't think I'm pronouncing her name right. She's Dutch and I think it's Marjolein Bastian. If I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, forgive me. But, um, I just think she does marvelous garden art. She does calendars. I buy her calendars nearly every year. She does greeting cards. And this particular set of dishware is called Wildflower Meadow by Marjolein Bastian. Watercolor artist. Beautiful work. We'll put a couple of cookies out so you can see some more plates. These are very, very good cookies. They're moist. Uh-oh. <laughs> I knew it was too good to be true. That we could have any silence around here. Here's another one of her gorgeous plates. I believe these are the same Im images on her calendars. Because this one looks very familiar to me. I just picked these up. Um, I could only find four of them, and I found them in a an antique shop a couple years back. But I'm sure that you can find them on her website. Now, let me talk about this mousse. The mousse itself is just, just delicious. I never made a mousse before. This was my first time. And it looked so pretty in those tulips, but I'm going to tell you that's a bit of a trick. Because the tulips do not want to cooperate. I actually like the fact that it didn't have that much sugar in it. About a, It was a half a cup of sugar, and you got a big bowl of mousse. But you could also replace that sugar with some other artificial sweetener if you like. But it, it's really, really beautiful. But I um, didn't have that much success with the tulips. It seems like almost immediately, as soon as I put the mousse in, the tulips began to wilt. 
So there must be some sort of a trick to keeping them fresh looking. And I think that would be to pick them early in the morning and get your tulips. Make this recipe when your tulips first begin to bloom. Because these tulips have been open for a while and um, they've seen they've seen better days. But <laughs> I tried quite a few things. I actually tried to put them in the freezer. Uh, <laughs> that didn't work either. And then um, originally, as you may have seen in the in the video, I put them on a bed of whipped cream and the whipped cream just started to melt right away so I quickly cleaned off the plates as well as I could and placed them back on the plate without the whipped cream and I used the, the strawberries all around the edges just to hold the tulip in place because it just wanted to keep flopping over. If instead of the whipped cream you used a bed of meringue which would be stiffer I think that would be a lot easier to hold the tulip in place. The raspberry lemonade is quite tart, but you can add more sweetener if you like. Um, I believe this had about, ooh, one and a half cups of sugar. It will be in the recipe beneath. And the recipe called for you to strain the seeds and the pulp through a sieve. But I actually like the seeds and the pulp, and I think they make it more interesting, and they give it a little more flavor. So I did not do that part. Also... The tulip petals are edible, and so you can actually eat this whole thing. This is a lemon balm leaf, and then we have the lavender in here, and then we have the tulips, the raspberry, and the raspberry mousse. It's really a delightful and beautiful presentation if you get the tulips at the right time. <laughs> so the next time I make it in the spring, early next year, I'll get my tulips just as they're starting to open. And the flowers on the table, some of these are from the garden today. This is from the snowball bush. This is one of uh, a one year brand new peony that just came up and bloomed for the first time. And then these little, little pink carnations actually were purchased in the grocery store in a vase. So just to add a little extra color. Notice carnations last a long time in a vase. So if you've been out working in your garden all day, I think you deserve a nice, sweet and pleasant treat. Make this the day in advance. And then after you wash up, just sit on your porch, enjoy these sweet things and look out on your garden and be very happy. From Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.